What's going on guys and for the win here we are back with our franchise mode as the Montreal Canadiens and here we are up at the trade deadline 33 19 and 10 our spot in the playoffs is pretty much assured at this point I mean we are eight points in front of the last wild card spot at the deadline third in our division six points ahead of the divisional uh, wild card ahead of the Maple Leafs so we're looking like we're in great shape. Now, trade deadline, it's tricky. You A rental would be cool, but at the same time, we don't want to give up any of... We don't want to mortgage our future for the present when we're not really an all-in type team. We're not really that. I mean, you look at where the core is. We still need to draft heavily, essentially. And that's, that's kind of what... I mean, we have a great center core right now we're a little bit short on wingers and defense prospects especially so that's kind of what we need to uh, pursue here uh in drafts especially and i again i don't think w like value wise what could we even give up for a rental there's not a whole lot there really isn't so you'd love to try to get some picks here but even that for this year is going to be pretty tough to do um, we could probably get some like mid kind of picks here, but that's that's about it. I think early wise, I mean the Nashville pick, we gotta hope that that one pans out really well. Our own pick, you know, now that we're a playoff team, all of a sudden, not gonna have a ton of value, so we're really gonna have to maneuver um, to get the good players that we really really want. So, um, is that eleven? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We have ten picks for this coming draft, so we're allowed two more. We can grab two more in the first two rounds, but I don't think we'll really be able to do that here. I mean, maybe a couple seconds. And you know what? There was some pretty good stuff in the uh, in the seconds now, but what do we give up for that? Do I give up starting goaltender, 66 at 18? Probably not. Oh, you want to hold on to the elite, uh, the elite goaltender prospect. We can give up some of this, but I mean, what are they really going to become? Like... A lot of value. Silver guard, I could chuck in there. I don't. I don't mind doing that. That's that's a fringe star of the backup. I kind of like where he's built right now. Sixty-seven and eighteen. Like, I would rather use his value than, um, or sorry, rather use this guy's value than his because, well, even though he's got backup potential, he's way higher overall at the same age. So, I want to hold on to that. I'll chuck in some, uh, some of the lower guys here, like. The bottom six guys, 68, 22. The seventh D guy, you can throw in ones like that. Unsigned talent. Now, is all three of these guys going to be enough to get us a second? Probably not. That's un that's the unfortunate part. Is that I would love to grab another second, but I don't know if we'll be able to do that for this. It'll have to be, well, maybe from here. I think the value is going to be a bit too high. Yeah, that's that's way too high. It has to be a team with a really good record right now that we got to hope for maybe an early exit. Essentially, that's kind of that's kind of what we're after here. Like a team like Detroit, but unfortunately, they don't want to give it up because they're listed as a hopeful, even though they've been a great team these past two years. So again, this is clearly not. I don't think enough value. We're throwing a fringe starter, a bottom six, and a seven D. Try to get a second. I don't think that's going to do it. Yeah, no. Um, value just isn't there whatsoever. I don't even know if we can get a third for this. Might be able to get a third. I wouldn't be... I'd be okay with a third. Now, the value looks skewed, but that's just because the minimum value, the way it, like, adds into the, uh, the thing at the bottom, the little bars there, it doesn't really add up. But, uh, let's try it for a third. Yeah, still, we can't even get a third for all that. So, yeah, trying to get a second or something is... We're gonna have to give something up. And we did give up most of our kind of mid prospects to move up. Not not saying that was a bad trade, but it was a great trade for what it was. Again, okay, there's some of these guys. You know, Fairbrother, Norlander, one or one or one or both of these guys we could throw in. Lefty two way guy built kind of decently. Fairbrother on the uh, built very similar to these two guys. So we're not going to need both of them, essentially. ones They're both lefties. So you pr probably want to go with the higher overall one. So we could chuck him in there. We could also throw Connolly in there if we want to. I'll hold on to Turon because he was righty. So I like that. Having a couple, you know, top six type potential guys of the future, righty and a lefty. I'll hold on to one of each. But we're going to be able to draft way more. And we could throw Connolly in there. 
as a sniper with the you know low top six. He he's an asset I wouldn't be would be willing to trade, but I also could wait till the draft for that. But I'll throw in Norlander right now, and let's try to move for a second and something else here. Throwing him in there. That second's too much. I think we still have to pursue a second who's like, well, they don't have one. So let's go to back to Dallas there. Get to kind of still have to pursue a second. And we're not going to get a third. Even though I am checking in that top six, it's definitely not enough. I'm going to see what they say. Yeah, not enough. All right. Um, I'll keep moving it down here. I do want to get a second plus something else. If I can. Now, now still, the top, still in the top six in there still might not be enough. Even with those other three guys. But I'd still like to get some other pick with it. I don't even know if we can get the second alone. The way with their, with the way we're trending right now. Doesn't actually seem... I might not even be able to get the second. Again, it's, it's kind of hard to judge when you're moving for a second. And you're throwing in junk along with that. Okay, even though it's quite close to fair value. So we can probably get the second for these guys alone. Not quite. Hmm. We need a tiny bit more. A tiny bit more. So we could just make separate trades here if we really wanted to, which I might do right now. So we could do that plus the guy. We can actually go for a better second at this point. If if we do this with the uh, with the low top six guy, which I'd be completely willing to do. Because low top six is kind of dime a dozen. If this guy was a role player, I'd hold on to him. But he's a sniper. We have plenty of offensive tools. So let's go for the second and a third maybe. Grab a few of those earlier picks because it's looking like a relatively deep draft again. Or grab a couple seconds. We can grab a second from next year as well. We can go for like two seconds. That should work and maybe even be able to get a bit more. Two seconds, maybe another something for this year. Doubt we can get two seconds and a third. Yeah, no way. Um, two seconds, so I kind of like that idea. And I could still grab another pick for this year. That will max us out on picks for this next year, but that's fine. We can hold on to those other guys for later picks for next year or something like that. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go, scroll down here again, try to see, try to get as much out of these guys as I can. But I don't know how much I will be able to get. I don't even. We might not be able to get two seconds, which is okay. I'm just trying to get as much back as I can here. So yeah, let's just see what they say. The two seconds. Oh, they're not even. They're still saying quite far off. All right, so let's go for a second and a third. And maybe try to snag something from next year. And we'll move down like that. There we go. Okay, so we got a second and a third from this year. And then a four for next year as well. Which gives us the max amount of picks from this year. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. There you go. So we're kind of we're, we're kind of putting most of our picks in those earlier rounds. Because we do want to go for quality here. Quantity is great. But quantity is something that we could kind of focus on a bit more in the later stages. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what's there, but yeah, we definitely want to go for the higher the higher rounds for both being able to maybe shift around and because, oh, that's where most of the good prospects are going to come, for sure. Because judging by last year, how deep that was, I'm kind of thinking this next one could be quite deep as well. So three-thirds, two seconds, two firsts. That's a pretty good location. We also have two fours. It's a pretty good spot to be in, and there's your max amount of picks. And now we can hold on to those guys. Although one of them, oh yeah, hold on, one of them was actually like 22 or something, wasn't he? Yeah, this guy. So I don't want to, I could lose him for free, that's not the biggest deal. Oh, this guy as well. These two, I should actually trade now. Alright. So let's do that and grab a pick for next year. Not the biggest of deals. But I just don't want to lose those guys for free. So, wow, they have no, oh, what the hell? Columbus has traded away all their picks, Jesus. What are they doing? Ah, <laughs> oh, not too good. Can I get a six and a seven from next year? Yes, I can. Okay, so obviously if it's for next year, it doesn't really matter if we're over. We could always trade away some picks, but let me just check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We got ten for next year. Okay, we still have a bit more wriggle, wiggle room. So there we are. All right, and like I said, I think that's going to be our deadline. I don't want to trade any of our prospects for a rental, and we don't have any prospects that I feel like I could trade away. Like, I don't, I don't think any of, none of our prospects right now are expendable yet until we kind of, you know, are able to draft more and figure out what we don't kind of need or kind of don't need 
in a sense. So, yeah, everything else I'm holding on to, all the prospects. It's not time to trade those away right now for a rental. And I don't think a rental would really give us that extra push over the top anyway. If you look at this team, it looks decent, but it's not anything crazy good, right? I mean, Muratsov's only got 34 points in 61 games played. We're trying to put him on the top line. He did really well for a while. He's kind of dropped off again. I'm going to leave him up there. See if we can get him have the at least a good rookie year, but uh, yeah. Other than that, I think that's about it. So let's uh, let's continue on here with the simulation. Finish off the year, check everything out, and then move our move on to the playoffs. So let's go Montreal. Hopefully, we have ourselves a good end. Hopefully, we don't completely start tanking here at the end. Okay, so Tatar accepted the, his extension that we offered him last video. Gallagher accepted. That's good for us. We should have a couple more. Uh, Shirat's full heal. That's good for us. Petrie accepted. Flurry accepted. Kotkanami accepted. Paling. Yep, everyone accepted by the looks of it. So there we go. Uh, Olofsson's fully healed. Was he out? I believe he was out. That was the uh, herniated disc guy, wasn't it? Yes, it was. <laughs> Mr. Herniated Disc is back. Hopefully he doesn't get injured again like a game later. Come on, Olufsen. Do it. There, all right. Got a couple wins and loss. Got to answer right back with a win. There we go. Looking saw, man. Come on. No, string them together. What the fuck is wrong with this guy? Injury prone is an understatement. Holy hell. This is terrible. What a <laughs> This guy's just getting injured every two seconds. Come on, Olufsen. Get good. Oh, my God. Three-game losing streak. Come on now, Montreal. All right. That's a four-game losing streak, and we're not scoring. All right. Stop. 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 I can't. No. Guy's got to come off the first line. I don't think he's I don't think he's getting the job done anymore, man. What do you have? 20 goals and 14 assists. What's he at now? He's up to an 81. 24 goal. God damn. He had a lot of points since then. It's not even his fault. It really isn't. It doesn't feel like, I don't know. Like he had 20 goals, 14 assists. We started Simmons again. He's got four goals and two, six points in. How many games was that? How many games was that? Since the deadline. Six points in. Ooh, there's the deadline. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Six points in seven, eight, nine games. That's not bad. It's really not his fault. I can't even blame him. We're just playing terribly right now. I don't know who to blame. Can we blame anyone? I don't even know. But, uh, yeah, not not too good of an end of the season right now. Hopefully we don't drop out of the playoffs. Wow, two high elites. Okay. Pretty good. Pretty solid here. At least it's very deep. Yeah, this is a very deep first round. So, actually, I wouldn't even mind dropping out of the playoffs at this point. <laughs> do what you're going to do, team. Yeah, straight up, do what you're going to do. This is a ridiculously deep first round. So, let's see. Ooh. Oh, also, and a guaranteed elite goalie. Oh, yeah. This is looking very, very good. So even if we do make the playoffs, we'll be able to pretty much be guaranteed to grab this guy. We also have yet another elite goalie we can grab. Five-year ETA, of course, but still looking good. Any low elites here? One guarantee. All right, we got him. It's a winger, unfortunately. We want the defenseman that gets got. I don't know if we'll have any, any such luck with that. But, yeah. Speaking of which, I got to go back and look at... Uh, Oh, not that guy. He's real. Skip him. I'm going to need to go back and look at uh, some of those mediums as well just to see if we can find any defensemen because that is who I'm going to basically prioritize. We need some defensive prospects. Wingers too. So obviously we're not going to just neglect those, but we really need to try to prioritize defensive prospects. We don't really have any. No elites, that's for sure. So... That's something I definitely need to do here. So I'll go back after I take care of all the lows and stuff like that. Scout you just because. Again, centers aren't bad to grab because you could always turn them in the wingers. So that's also a good thing. Definitely 
take a look at the se the second rounders here. So many forwards. Come on, defense, where you at? Nope, still nothing. I don't know. Not great here in the way of defense. Wow, man. There we go. There's a few. Uh, high top four. Okay, so there's a high top four in there. That's really good. Um, medium top four. High top four is there's something that's pretty damn good. But, uh, of course, we also want elites. But high top four at ninth. That's a pretty good one to pick up, too. Lambos. Get you scouting. All right, the lows. Bunch of low top fours. Scout him out. Ooh, a high goalie. Obviously, we'll want to get him scouted. With what we've seen on the stream, a bunch of high elite goalies appearing. So, goalies, defense, definite priorities here. All right. Um, any lows here with possibility? Any defense in here? Nope. Oh, well, obviously, those are going to be top nines. <laughs> or uh, forwards, of course, because the top nine. It's the next one. Top six. Got to read it correctly. Here we go. A few defensemen. All right. Well, Luke Hughes still isn't scouted. That's hilarious. That's just what happens sometimes. You scout them the whole year, and they just stay at like two ticks. And they never go above it. Well, this guy's real, so he's probably not anything great, but I already clicked on him. And one here. Okay. Well, could use a bit more. Let me go back up to the top and look through that. Uh, well, let's just go back to central scouting ranking here. So defend there's Hornfist. He would be pretty good. Can we get into the top five, though? That's a big question. Clark, we're probably not going to get unless we get extremely lucky. Um, Lindgren, now he's obviously an option, but yeah, that's kind of it. All the rest are forwards. Niemannen, now this guy is obviously, I, I don't want to miss out on, which we should be able to guarantee ourselves with either pick, or that's very, very easy, it's a lot easier to trade up for that, and it's a lot more, well, it makes a lot more sense to be able to trade into, like, the top 15 rather than the top 5, obviously, and if they want to give it up, well, that's, can definitely go for it. Any more defensemen here? Yeah, just so many forwards. Tons of forwards. All right, well, there we go. I definitely spent more time on scouting, but it's very important. Okay, another injury. Wow, man, our AHL defense is injury-prone to hell. Yeah, that's that's fun. Well, let's move that up. Gives us some nice uh, chemistry boosts, at least. Another loss. How about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven game losing streak? We win a game, then we lose again. We might actually find ourselves dropping out of the playoffs right here. Yep, we're down to a wild card. We just lost again. Wow. And now Paul Byron's injured. So we could actually drop out here. We have done horribly since the deadline. Really, really bad. And again, I don't really think I can blame the top line of Maratsov being up there. Well, he's definitely slowing down. Well, what's his name is out, so I'm not really going to move him out now. Yeah, Byron's out, so I'm just leaving him there. Oh, wow. This is... Wow. Wow, yeah, we're actually out of a... What the fuck? Well, this could be a blessing in disguise, but that's pretty bad. That is a horrible end of the sea. We just pulled a Buffalo Sabres. We literally just pulled a Buffalo Sabres, man. That is terrible. Second half of the season collapsed, man. Wow, we just lost again. We're in the wild card, but we lost in reg. Did we make the playoffs or did we fall out? I think we fell out. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> look at look at the end of this, look at this end of the season. This is horrible. Absolutely atrocious. We win two games, we look like we're fine, then lose. Win one, two, three, four, five, six, seven game losing streak. We win, then we lose, then we win, then one, two, three, four, five, six game losing streak to end the season. And I can't, you can't, exp you, how are you going to tell me? Like, we didn't really make any noticeable changes, really. We just shit the bed. I put up the sniper onto the top line. He did very well there, considering, especially in that beginning stretch. I don't know. Maybe as a whole, 
I mean, he only got 44 points. Maybe we wanted to see more out of him. But at the same time, like... I don't know, man. It, we looked like we got enough production to get the job done. So, I'm going to see what happened here. I know injury didn't help to Byron, but that just seems like one of those things that's almost scripted, you know? We don't change our team. We did great throughout the entire year. And then, all right, well, I got to check <laughs> what went wrong here. We had a positive ratio. Our goals against shot way up. Yeah, our, our goals for dropped slightly, but it was never super high. But our goals against went way up. Power play was pretty bad. Penalty, like, it, it. we don't look like a bad team. Home, gee, why are we so bad on home ice? We are god-awful on home ice. Yeah, 271 in the last 10. That's a reason you missed. But, yeah, I don't even want to check how we stack up to the rest of the league. That's extremely disappointing. I mean, we need better wingers. I mean, I know that. We don't look like a playoff team on paper, and I guess that caught up to us. But you look at production. There's a pretty steep drop. Yeah, Tatar underperformed. Maratsov, Dano, yeah. We needed a bit more. But we're still... That's just... This is just a lesson to take as a young team, I think. Yeah. It's rough, but we just... We kind of collapse. And what, what changes could I have really made there to kind of make us better? We don't have the winger depth to be able to shift stuff around. I maybe could have put Gallagher top line. Like, maybe in hindsight I could have tried that out. But he's really good on the second line, chemistry-wise. And he has been play he fits in really well with Coach Konami and Drew in Hybrid, like, Tatar. Should have got a bit more goals, I feel like. But just more production in general from Tatar. But again, we don't have the strongest of teams, so I guess the fall off was was imminent. I just didn't think the fall off would be that hard there at the end. That it's a huge surprise that we ended up missing the playoffs, man. It really is. I really we, we I thought we had it in the bag. Like even if we faltered a bit, I thought we had it in the bag, but <laughs> boy was I wrong. What happened to Carey Price? Well, his numbers dropped pretty significantly. Actually, well, no, just his record. I don't know. I think it's just, I think if you were able to look at our ratio from those last bit, it was, like, vastly different from the rest of the season. That just sucks, man. Like, we didn't really make any changes at the deadline. Why, did all of a sudden, did we just shit the bed? <laughs> But again, this is kind of a blessing in disguise because of how strong the first round is. So maybe the game's actually just trying to help me out. But it still sucks. Like, we're on pace for the playoffs the entire year. And then after the deadline, without making any changes to the lineup, we just completely suck. So that's not fun. And our home record was terrible. But the good news is we have really good guys. Really good one-two punch down the middle and don't don't me and Cookin and we just need elite wingers. Druin's not an elite winger. Gallagher's not. Tatar's not. Maratsev could be. Didn't grow throughout this year though. I really need him to get a big old jump. Excuse me. Yeah, there's just too much drop off between the top scorers. We only have five guys making 50 plus points. That's not enough. Yeah, we needed more. And we were technically on pace to have more, but it didn't keep up. Injuries sucked, and, uh, yeah, well. I wanted a bit more from Shiri, especially, too. Even though he iced third line, he's getting some power play time. I thought he could have maybe got 45 points. Maybe even get 50. We've had teams like that, and especially when other lines aren't scoring as heavily, but maybe he didn't have enough supporting cast. I mean, Dano isn't the strongest third line center. You know, especially offensively. He's good. I, but, you know, down the road, this is a guy we'd be using as a fourth line center, you know. God, he's got good face-offs, though. So, yeah. Kind of unfortunate. It's it's hard to say where it went wrong. We just stopped. I think we just stopped producing and our goals against got worse. I think our, we just, it, I don't know. I don't know how to say it. It just kind of caught up to us. Our team kind of caught up to us. I don't know. But there's Sagan leading in points with 110. 
All right, so he wins. He's going to win all the trophies by looks. It might even be leading in goals, too. Uh, no, Ovechkin beats him by one, so screw you, Sagan. But, yeah, good few hundred point scores there. McKinnon and Rantanen, yikes. Even Crosby almost got 100 points once again. All right, the assist leader was Rantanen with 74. Jeez. Plus minuses, okay, not super, super high like it can get. Let's check out who the snipers are here, the deadliest. Um, Sagan's got the best shooting percentage, yep. Who's the most clutch, though? Dreisaitl and Hornquist, 10 goals apiece with 38. Uh, okay, so tech, good draw is technically the most clutch with the best ratio. All right, power play goal leader would be McDavid with 16, tied with Kane. Power play point leaders, uh, Matt, wow, Rantanen with 35 points on the power play. How about shorties? Only three for Steen. Oh, interesting. Fully total though, Ehler. All right. How are we looking at the defensive stats? Who's looking like the Selkies? Lita, oh my god, Kopitar. I think that's got to be Kopitar. I mean, O'Reilly's still up there. He's got a slightly better percentage, but Kopitar, more hits, less blocked shots, better ratio. He might have terrible plus minus, though. He's a minus one, while O'Reilly's a plus 13, so they'll probably get it to O'Reilly again. Fine. Barkov, though. Really good hit totals. And, yeah, I think they're going to give it to O'Reilly. <laughs> it's just looking like they're going to give it to O'Reilly. But look at Kopitar's ice time, 23-37. Pretty hefty. I would, I don't know, that's a tough call. I mean, the face-off differential is very slight. Plus, minus is not an accurate stat, but the game seems to like it. You know, they'll probably give it to O'Reilly. What can you do, though? What can you do? All right. Oh, my goodness. So, Carlson, 76 points, leads... The team, or leads the league defenseman, and makes a very strong case for himself for the Norris, although Hedman with a plus 58 is ridiculous. Way less points, bit more ice time. Defensively, obviously, well, less blocked shots, but way more hits. Um, A better ratio for Carlson. So, if you're looking at it, Carlson should technically win the Norris, but the game seems to love plus minus, but will it... The 14 point differential and all those other things. How much does it love plus minus? <laughs> that's the that's insane plus minus from Hedman. Let's check plus minuses for defensemen here. Jesus, Hedman. By a mile. And the next guy was McDonough there. That is insane. All right. Well, goalies. Let's go to 50 here. Um, okay, this is gonna be tough. Bishop, really good, but also Varlamov, Vasilevsky. Holt be up here. Now Bishop. Oh man, this is gonna be yeah, this is oh man, this is tight. This is real tight. Bishop's goals against, but I, I take that sometimes with a grain of salt. Because, well, he was on a very good team, judging by his record. Varlamov wasn't. And look at the numbers he put up. Vasilevsky was on a pretty good team. So was Holtby. I mean, you gotta give Varlamov some credit in here. So, phew. yeah, that's, wow, that's, they're, they're really tight, man, I don't know, but Bishop, definitely the, the leader, Varlamov, I think you have to give credit for, the question marks are Vasilevsky and Holtby, in my opinion, because they're both on good teams, and they didn't have as good a goals against, but very similar save percentages, they tactically allowed less goals, too, but in the same amount of games almost. Oh, man. You know what? I think we got a four-way tie, honestly. The way I'm looking at it. It's really seeming like that. Yeah. I would... I don't know. I'm honestly going to say a four-way tie here. But Carey... Okay, you know what? Carey Price, while he did falter at the end, he actually had pretty good numbers considering comparing him to another goaltender. He's a top 10 goaltender still. So, yeah. Pff, I don't even know why we... I think we just... Oh, man. I don't even know why we fell apart as hard as we did. But pretty unfortunate that we did. <laughs> because we ended up missing the playoffs after looking like a shoo-in. Oh, I'm still a little salty about that. Let's check rookies. Yeah, Marantzoff not even close, man. He had the most goals for the rookies, but didn't get enough production. We really needed him to grow throughout the year, and he just didn't. He wasn't growing on the third line either, so I don't really care that I put him up on the top line. 
<sighs> Pretty rough, but uh, overall a decent rookie year for Mark uh, Maratsov. 58 points for Zadina. Any notable rookie goalies here? Probably not. Oh, actually, Blackwood. That's your dump. Pretty good numbers by Blackwood, considering. I mean, he was kind of he was kind of at league average, probably for uh, for goaltenders. He's been right in the middle of it. So yeah, good good rookie year for Mackenzie Blackwood. But yeah, no one no one who I would say would deserve to get the Calder over the forward. But the game never gives him the Calder. But it's always fun. Always fun to check him out and uh, make my own Calder winner. <laughs> All right, let's check the fun stats now. Hits, come on now. Uh, 212 for Hyman. Okay, three guys with over 200 hits. You like to see that. There we go. And fights. Reeves with 20. And then look at that steep ass drop off on the Oilers now, Ryan Reeves. What's is he still on that terrible contract? No, he's on a more realistic contract. Okay, well, that's a, yeah, 15 less fights. <laughs> so we're going to that stage where there's going to be less fights until... Enough two-way forwards and two-way defensemen get drafted that are elite and they have often fighting for some reason. Because <laughs> that's what the game does. Who knows why? That's just what happens. All right. So now let's check out progress reports and hope that we got a bit more growth across the board. But uh, can we have some kind of silver lining to how this year ended, please? Uh, carry, and carry price declined more. What is the point of getting a veteran... He's supposed to help them not decline, right? God damn it. Carry Price is just declining insanely heavily. Ugh. That is not good. They still got the stat minuses. Hopefully those get he gets rid of those. And we need him to have a good year to get stat growth and maintain. But yeah, it's not looking good the way he's declining right now. Really not I that's why I got the freaking goaltender coach I did, who was good with veterans, but and he had good teaching, but it's not really helping right now, which is not too good. At least Coach Kanemi grew throughout the years. Faceoffs gone up by four. That's really good. We need him to be good at faceoffs. Everyone else should be natural. Unless, oh, that's his natural growth from Drew Okay. Would have preferred a bit to his awareness or shot, but you know what? It's all right. And nothing really for... Uh, Okay, Maratsov did grow. Good. It's just not... Okay, it didn't really change his overall, so it did grow. That's good for us. He should get a jump as well. Um, But the thing I'm not too happy about, is that real growth for Domi? Yes, it is. Awareness, face-offs, that's good. Um, Suzuki. One tick of growth, and he's not liking his morale. Oops. Tried to keep him happy with the power play time, but... Didn't really work. Kale Fleury got a tiny bit of growth. Yeah, not a whole lot from guys on our NHL that we kind of needed it from. Oh, here, here we go. Okay, so Hermie grew really well. Lundell grew a bunch more, but not really a whole... I mean, it looks like a bunch, but it's one to, like, everywhere, which is eh, kind of a letdown for his first year here. Sokolov jumping up from 47 to 55 is... That's... I mean, we could have hoped for more, but that's pretty damn good. Now we just need him to get another good jump in the offseason. And that'll look solid for a silver guard. We're holding. We held on to. He got some decent growth. Uh, Mizak up to almost sixty now. Solid growth. Nothing outstanding. Bednar. Bednar grew a crap ton. <laughs> Bednar shot. Dude, look at those numbers he put up. Wow. Yeah, Bednar. Bednar looking good. Yeah, you can in up to a 66 now. He is 21. Yeah, needed more growth out of him. A lot more. Same with Elanen. Needed way more growth out of the pair of them. Tehran grew. Um, again, could have used more out of him, but all in all, pretty decent. Romanov also could have used more out of him. 21, 76, top four. Mm, he's cutting it close. I think maybe 83 cap on him, the way it's looking. Kalinin, though, that's some... Decently solid growth from me, at least overall wise and everything. So, all in all, decent growth, nothing crazy outstanding. It's just jerking. Looks like he grew a bit more than a. Yeah, he's loose his back of him now. He's ready. Caulfield, god damn it. Is Caulfield really gonna bust, man? Please don't. Although he's up to 74. I think he I think it's not really showing all the growth he's getting. 
Although that is some morale in there. Hmm. Who knows? Hopefully he jumps. Need him to jump. Ugh. Well. <laughs> That was one way to end the season. Where are we ending up place-wise? Actually, that's actually one thing I do want to see. As, uh, we got five wins after the deadline. That's it. Literal five wins. What place did we end up in? Oh, my. Oh, Oh, 17th. Okay, I should just go by place. Yeah, so we're in 17th place, which means that'll give us the 14th pick. Oh, actually, no, no, no. That'll give us the 15th. Wait. How does this work? No, that's, uh, well, yeah, it reverses. <laughs> no, it should give us the, yeah, yeah, because 16 to, yeah, sorry. I was like cutting the number of teams in by half. Yeah, yeah, that's not how to do it. Anyway, so yeah, we should actually be able to get Neiman in regardless whether our own pick. So like I said, it is kind of a blessing in disguise. Nashville didn't drop as much as we thought they would. So there's that. So. Yeah, they're 12th. They'd have to jump up quite a bit. Yeah, we are. Oh, actually, we are 15. Fuck me. So, yeah, we'd actually have to jump up. Uh, yeah, I thought, again, I did the 32. Never mind. Don't, don't, don't worry about me. Math is hard, and I'm terrible at it. But, yeah, 15th. Goddamn. So, we would have to move up slightly unless we somehow move up. And Nashville didn't draw back as far as we wanted them to. So, while being a blessing in the skies, we're going to have to rely on a bit of old lady luck to get picks that we could really really use but we really need that Neiman in guy I'm trading up for him regardless whoever wants to give a pick we're moving up we got to get Neiman and we need a defensive prospect uh, and that Nashville pick hopefully we can get lucky with one of these but I'm not holding my breath last year was the year to be 12th apparently I don't think we'll get lucky again this year uh rip rip us man but you never know crazier things have happened we did see in the stream or What's that? Oh, I can't remember. It was sometime recently that like the 15th team moved up to get the first overall. I can't remember if that was on stream or what, or if that was actually in video, but uh, yeah. <laughs> there we are, like, we had the best goals against out of any, look at this, the Calgary makes the playoffs with the same amount of points, a worse ratio. Philly makes the playoffs with more points with a worse ratio. Like, like dude, like we were there. It's just, I think it's just the, the tail end of the season. If we could have just seen the numbers from that, I'm sure it's just horrible. Absolutely horrible. So, yeah, big old yikes right there. Missing the playoffs after I thought for sure we were making it. Not kicking myself that I didn't get a rental. I'm actually glad we didn't sell anything for a rental because that could have still happened. The sim could have just screwed us over. We were actually literally one point out of the wild guard spot. So, if we got a point out of that last game, we actually might have been able to win <laughs> going to the playoffs. <laughs> But alas, we are out. So, yeah. That's fun. <laughs> All right, well, draft up in the next one. No playoffs for this episode. Surprising the hell out of me. Probably a lot of you guys after the way we started last one. But it's just the way it goes. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Remember to leave that like. And I'll see you guys in the next one.